thing is going to, one thing is going to affect the other. They're not interdependent of each other. So initially what we should see is that the frequency is, uh, initially we should see that the frequency is relatively low. So I'm not saying taking long loping steps, but you want to have big complete pushes initially. It's not little choppy steps. Uh, the stride length is going to be a little bit smaller. Stride length is going to be a little bit smaller. But that is not due to the uh, fact that the guy's not trying hard or he's just trying to turn over real quickly. It's due to the fact that he's starting from zero, zero velocity, and trying to move up to uh, max velocity. And just as a result of that, his stride length is going to be relatively low. As he, as he progresses through the acceleration, frequency should get faster and stride length should get longer. Uh, progression of speed, what we should see is that he moves from a relatively slower moving body parts to much faster. Everything tightens up and moves a little bit faster. And again, as I showed on the wall over here, we should see the progression of body angles moving from this, uh, say, 40 degree departure angle, gradually pushing the hips underneath the shoulders. Uh, this, just real quick, this frequency and stride length relationship issue, no matter what sport I'm working with or training the athletes in, there's always, I always come upon an athlete who has a uh, misconception about this issue here. And the misconception is that you want to turn over really quickly initially. Turn over really quickly initially to get yourself going. And the thought process is that, well, I want to, I want to get as many foot contacts in as possible. Well, what results from that is you're essentially just tip-tapping the ground. I call that uh, turnover addiction. People like to feel like they're turning over real quick. But really what's going on is it's a uh, hamster in a tread wheel, hamster, hamster in a tread wheel uh, scenario. If anyone has ever seen a hamster put in a tread wheel before, they spin their legs real fast, but they don't go anywhere. And that's the same type of concept here. These first couple steps, they're not slow, but they have to be big, complete pushes, not little choppy steps. <clears throat> After, say, the first uh, 15 to 20 yards, we hit what I would call maximum velocity or top end speed running. And for the purpose of this lecture, I've split maximum velocity running and acceleration uh, running into two different categories. In reality, there's, they are, you make a seamless progression from acceleration to top end speed. Again, uh, drastic changes have drastic con consequences. So it should be a gradual progression of body angles, uh, gradual progression of frequency, gradual progression of uh, range of motion. The underlying principles for top end speed running is that momentum has already been developed. We've already developed momentum through our acceleration. To continue moving forward then, you have to push up. You have to push up. Now that, to some of you, that may be killing the sacred cow. Uh, we're thinking we need to move forward. Why the hell would you need to push up? Well, if you think of a bouncy ball, if you've ever had a bouncy ball before, and you threw a bouncy ball down a hall, what would be the limiting factor to how far that thing goes? Would it be uh, its horizontal movement? Or would it be the fact that it's no longer bouncing up in the air anymore? It would be the latter. The effect of once momentum has been developed, the only thing that's going to stop you from moving forward is braking forces or the effects of gravity. So we're, if we keep applying vertical forces by pushing up, once we've hit top end speed running, we'll get that bouncy ball going and be able to maintain or actually enhance our top end speed running. Uh, vertical force generation is made possible when ground contact is made directly under the center of mass of the athlete. So to get the body moving, we need to be pushing behind the center of mass. When we're already up to speed, we need to be have the feet underneath the center mass. And this is very different than what you see a lot of athletes do where they're running with this butt out posture like this. 
This is what I call uh, uh, eighth grade girl.